Creepers. What's up you crazy creeps? So today is a very special vlog. I'm incredibly excited. Right behind me here is the World National Bigfoot Museum that just opened this week here in Boring, Oregon. That's right, just east of Portland. And if you guys can see right behind me here, we're standing in front of the Bigfoot Center and we're about to go in. And like I said, I'm incredibly excited because this is gonna be super cool. Discover the legend, explore the mystery. Let's creep in here and check this out. First, I wanna thank you guys definitely for tuning in and creeping with, as always. But I have to say, this is gonna be incredibly fun and I am super excited, so. For starters, I'll definitely leave a link to the location and everything like that in the description so that you guys can definitely come up here and visit and check it out yourself. But oh my gosh. This is incredible. <laughs> it's scary. <laughs> incredible. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oregon has um, Oregon has a form from their Secretary of State office that I downloaded. And I don't even know where to that, begin, uh, you guys. This is cool. So, um, and I'm guessing the gentleman on the phone is the owner here, so hopefully we can get him on video explaining some of these things as well, because I don't even know where to begin. But let's check out some of these, what looks to be footprints here. And then when I have a Wow, this is so cool. Okay. Okay. Now, um, can I, can I call you back with that? Like, this is incredible. Hours? My wife has it because uh, she has. We're returning a small monitor that we're using for one of our museum displays, and I bought her on that credit card, and she has that credit card with her. This is so incredible. Right I don't even know where to begin, so I'm going to wait until he's off the phone here and give you guys some more good info. Wow, this is incredible. That is incredible. Just to give you guys a better look here too. Check out the height of this thing. Okay, and I just reply to that and we'll see the attachment. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. Alright, bye-bye. This is absolutely incredible. This is only the tip of the iceberg. I'm Christopher. I do a vlog for YouTube by Clearski the Creeper. Okay. And I saw just a snigment of just a tid on KGW. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, this is incredible. This I would love to iceberg, I mean, get any information or, I mean, I just don't even know where to begin. This is just... Well, uh, the way to begin, I guess, is okay. to uh, say, to realize that these are our current displays. Okay. This is our gift center over here. But see this wall here? Okay. Everything behind this wall, which is actually four-fifths of the building, or more actually, that is going to be exhibit halls. All these artifacts on the wall, all the casts, all the broken tree branches, all the native mass, and a ton of other stuff I have cluttering my home, is going to be on display <laughs> I love in the back. It. <laughs> with, with each one is going to have an individual display, kind of like these cast cards oh, This is here. so cool. Thank you so much for your time right now. This okay, is yeah. incredible. So check this out. So yeah, you have a cast right here. You know, from, This one from Oregon, for example. It's a toll gate cast. You have an artifact, which is what you see all over the place. Yes. But each one of these artifacts actually has a story and a data history, and um, it has, it's, it's an important artifact. And so I'm going to give you displays and information as we continue to push backwards into the exhibit halls away from this room. So cool. So in not too long, hopefully by October, if everything goes right, but you know how that goes. That's but good timing too. That'll be great, October, right. yeah. We are going to have the exhibit halls release a large portion of them open, featuring tons of amazing artifacts with great information and data backing it up. Wow. And also explain the context of why these items are important for Bigfoot research. Yes. 
So this is just the first baby step. I was gonna say, cause I didn't wanna give away too much. I want people to definitely come here and check it out. So I didn't wanna, you know, give away too much by videoing it. But I mean, if this is just a snippet of what you have to offer, then yes, I mean, I would, sure. I absolutely love this. Now, I was under the impression, now you actually at one point encountered a Bigfoot or saw one? I've or seen one in my wow. life. Wow. 25 years of looking and I saw one through a thermal imager. And so that is basically like, just the tip of the iceberg as to why you created this as well, or I mean, well, yes and no. Just always been interested, or I've been doing Bigfoot field research for 25 years now, actually a little over 25 years now that I'm thinking of it. But um, and I was blessed to be on Finding Bigfoot on Animal Planet okay. for uh, eight or nine years. And before that, I was an elementary school teacher. And now that the show's off, I could go back to teaching. You know, I, I, I'd have to go take a few classes and get my credential back. No big deal. That's something all the teachers have to do. Um, but the fact is, well, I've been blessed with this Bigfoot thing. Maybe I can scratch a living closer to home by doing something with that. Heck yeah, so, that's so cool. <laughs> this is a fun way to do it. So I'm still educating. Yes. I'm not doing multiple subjects or teaching 10-year-olds science and math. Yes. And all this stuff. I'm teaching the world about Bigfoot. And something that you're super passionate about. About too that you can help other people fulfill their passions in Bigfoot and stuff like that so that is so cool yeah. um, so now um, go ahead and I mean plug any info I would love to get any more info on the vlog about where they can tune in or where they can get a hold of you or any information as to websites they can visit so they can check out things online on the gift shop um, any information that you have I would love to check these out a little bit more as go well um, so now these are actual impressions of footprints that have been found. Yes. Now, the majority, okay, so this is the California, and then this is the Oregon one, you guys. Just one of, one of many. One of many. It has a nice, compelling story. Guess what that is? Okay. Um, maybe like an imprint of two feet together without the toes, or? That's an ass print. <gasps> <laughs> a sask, a, a sasquatch. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You've heard of big foot of butt. Okay, right. Big butt. Uh, I like Check this big out. Butts, I cannot lie. I was gonna I say, did it. Sir Mix a lot find that one? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, even like uh, sure. That's so after, cool. <laughs> um, what you do start noticing is that the anatomy is there. There's suggestions of the sphincter, and also on top. Was of that, that Oregon? Was that found in Oregon? Uh, Oregon or Washington, right? Wow. You can actually see the hair flow pattern on the cast itself. See the hair pattern? Up oh in yes. Here? And it turns out that the hair flow pattern on this cast is exactly the same hair flow pattern as that of all the other great apes, including humans, depending on how, how hairy your ape. <laughs> that is so. Incredibly interesting and funny. So there's a Florida print as well. Yeah, I'll let you dig into that. I hear my phone. Okay, yeah, please. This is so cool. I really appreciate you. The only you. person I would leave a customer for is my wife, so excuse me. This second, is right? super cool, yeah. That is so funny. <laughs> so yeah, here's some more prints, you guys. Check this out. This is incredibly cool. Oh, and it looks like even maybe like a hand print as well. Or just a, a hand cast, yeah. Gosh, these are so cool. Now, the majority of Bigfoots, I believe, are the majority of the sightings are along the Oregon uh, California border. But so here's some pictures too of some people that have created these oh, yeah, I that. prints as well. The mattress prints. Oh, wow. Check that out, you guys. It looks like they found a mattress. Obviously some walking signs. Aren't those so cool? And here's one from Arizona as well. From like 2013 it looks. For two miles they followed the tracks. That's incredible. And then there's like some Native American mass tributes to Sasquatch, which I've heard stories that they would bang rocks together oh, okay. yeah, they want in the woods to create a noise to let the Sasquatch, Yeti, Bigfoot, whatever you want to call it, knowing that they were coming or just in the general area, which I would believe it would make it to where they would know that they were there, but only that, but keep them safe as well. <laughs> Incredible. I mean, this... 
I've seen the one at the Ripley's in Newport, which is in, very impressive when you walk in, but this That's is absolutely one. incredible. Let me tell you about this one. Yes, please. I ran across this one here, this exact one, at the Ohio Bigfoot Conference this past year. I, I do a lot of speaking engagements. I, I get a lot of jobs doing that sort of thing when I'm not at the museum here. And this was on display at the Ohio Bigfoot Conference, and the artist was there. The artist's name is Bo Bruns. Okay. He's the owner of Unit 70 Productions in Columbus, Ohio. He is a professional creature maker and animatronics thing awesome. for you know professional haunted houses and all that jazz. So cool. When I saw this thing, I said, that is the best one I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. And hey man, I'm a Bigfoot nerd, I've seen a lot of these. This is by far the best. The facial Heck features yeah. are the most accurate. In fact, since we've opened, we've had close wit witnesses who encounter Sasquatches at close range and said, yeah, yeah, the face is really good, and I would change this or this, but they all say it's very good with small tweaks. Interesting, if so everybody that's actually encountered a sighting has been able to collect attributes that have found that that is very typical facial yeah. features. Witnesses have said wow. this is very accurate. The that gave me goosebumps because I mean that's not just people pulling things out of there. I mean that's, no. if you say okay now that's like when they do facial recognition or police sketching or anything like that there's always the the same tributes that come up and you know what I mean? Yeah. So wow. So That's the arm incredible. It's also very accurate. Sasquatches have a longer arm than leg ratio than humans do. Oh, wow. Do. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah, because if he was standing up totally straight, it's almost like knee length. It would still be down lower. Yeah. yeah. Arms are longer in proportion to their legs than in human beings. Oh, interesting. And so that is also reflected in this, in this model here. And this model, we've nicknamed him Murphy. Because in Bigfooting, I don't know for all the Bigfooters that uh, watch you, in Bigfooting, we all know that if something can go wrong, it will go wrong. So Murphy's Law is in effect. Oh, there you go. Must be a Bigfoot. There you go. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, look at these facial features, you guys. I gotta get a. Wow. That is absolutely incredible, you guys. Look at that work. And the hair, the like. The detail is just. Yeah, so it's not they just bought this for once and for once and fall and forever. Gosh, if you wouldn't know better, that's taxidermy Bigfoot, basically. This is absolutely incredible, you guys. And this looks to me like an actual map of sightings. Is this sightings map? Uh, that has a bigger story than that. Okay. And definitely some really cool merch, you guys. Check this out. Big the foot? <laughs> awesome. These are incredible. Oh, there he is right there. Look at that, you guys. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to say this is definitely finding Bigfoot. This is incredible. What an amazing, amazing place. Okay, you asked about the map. Yes, sir. This map is actually a historical artifact. This was made by a man named Paul Freeman and a number of his Bigfoot researcher friends. Paul Freeman basically was paid by the Forest Service to patrol an off-limits watershed that fed the water supply for Walla Walla, Washington. One day, he was on horseback and he saw a Sasquatch there in 1982. He spent the rest of his life looking for Sasquatches after that. And this map is uh, basically where he kept a lot of his data. You can see there's dates and um, uh, uh, dates and years all over this map, and what he discovered by working with his friends, um, Wes, Wes Summerlin, Bill Lowry, Grover Krantz, and a few other people, is that patterns started developing. One pattern was right here around D Duck Springs, and, uh, and he noticed that every year in August and September, a lot of stuff happened there. Footprints were found, people saw these things. Oh, I see and that. So August he started showing up every, uh, every morning in August, and within a month, he got footage of a Sasquatch. Now Michael Freeman, Paul's son, Paul's passed away now, but Michael Freeman is going to allow our museum to show the footage on display with this map and a number of other artifacts from the Paul Freeman collection in the exhibit halls when we get that rolling. Again, this is just the tip of the iceberg, what you see here. I'm incredibly Every excited time for that. Comes back, even if it's weekly, they're gonna see something brand new that they've never seen before. Yes, because the 
those tapes too. I mean, it, the one that surfaced. I mean, pretty much anybody that's ever watched or loved Bigfoot has seen the the like 35 millimeter one. I believe it was shot in Oregon. I mean, obviously, California. You, okay, California. The Patterson Gimlin film. We have a frame of it over there. Very the one cool. That's in public domain. We have some other artifacts, including a couple footprints yes. from the site itself. We also have an original poster from 1968 when Roger took that film on tour and explained that it was, he was at the uh, Tacoma Dome, he was here at, at, in Portland at the Amphitheater, he's down in Eugene, he went on tour with that. And, and somebody so I know cool. from uh, the East Coast, Dr. Russ Jones. Got the actual, the actual poster, poster from, from the show. That's the yellow, the yellow one I'm looking at. Wow, that is incredible. Look at this gift shop, you guys, hands down. Again, I don't even know where to begin because there's just so much cool merch. So tell, I, I call my people the creepers, hence Clearski the creeper. Where is the best place that they can check more out and get some more info from you and maybe get a hold of you uh, to come tour the place when it's open fully or just now? Well, if you want to be uh, updated on our progress and just check out what we have going, right now our website is up and functioning, um, NorthAmericanBigfootCenter.com. Awesome. This has been incredibly cool. Incredibly cool. I'm gonna check out some more of your merch, but I really appreciate you having us and the information is just outstanding. I got goosebumps when you were telling me mostly about <laughs> things. So yeah, this is super cool. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Okay, thank you so much, man. Oh, look at the detail on these little guys too. That's so cool. I gotta check out this. Original Northwest Films presents in color the first actual motion pictures of Bigfoot. Wow. I love it. Oh, here is the actual still shot from the video he was extriving, uh, explaining for you guys. I'm so excited I can barely talk. <laughs> But you guys are definitely, definitely going to have to get online, visit the website, leave comments so that we can get a hold of you on this and get okay, you more we'll info. That way when I come back for the full opening, you guys will be the first to creep. But thank you so much again You're welcome. for having us. And uh, make sure you guys jump online and check out the website. Come on down, visit the center. Until then, I love you guys. Creeper out for now.